They'd roast you alive if there were no police. They'd break your house open, steal everything you have, rape your wife, and steal every possession you have. Make no mistake about it, this is a revolution going on right in front of your eyes. But because you didn't read it in the newspaper, it's not happening. Because it wasn't on the evening news, it's not happening. So a reporter was shot last week by a black man. Reporters just doing their job. No rioting. No signs saying white lives matter. No demands for gay flags to come down. No blaming the black community. No social justice messages. No, because as we all know, every mature, rational, logical thinking adult knows that the suspect and the suspect himself was responsible for his actions and is accountable. And he was probably insane. But I can't say the same for the man who shot the cop in the back of the head. He was doing it under direct orders of his own brain. And the thought that he could get away with it didn't come from his own brain, did it? As I showed you with the sound bites we played, it started over a year ago with Obama, Holder, Sharpton, Farrakhan, de Blasio, and others saying that the police basically are the problem. And in fact, one of them even saying, go out and kill them, point blank. The shooter who killed a Texas cop unleashed 15 shots at close range. He emptied the entire clip of his 40 caliber pistol and another bullet loaded in the chambers. He stood over the dead cop, according to Harris County DA D Devon Anderson. Shannon Miles was arraigned for capital murder on Monday morning in the Friday shooting of Deputy Darren Go Goforth, 47. His mama already said that he didn't do it. His mama already said he was home with her. He couldn't have done it, even though they have ballistics evidence traced to his gun with the bullets that were found in the sheriff's deputy and many other pieces of evidence connecting him directly to the crime. Black Lives Spatter disrupted a Minnesota State Fair uh, on Saturday. Black Lives Spatter disrupt Minnesota State Fair is my headline. They called for frying pigs at Minnesota State Fair. How much more can this country take under this revolutionary communist in the White House? How much longer can we take it is the question I ask. Is the question I ask. And what is the reaction going to be and when will it happen? Why won't the Republicans stand up for the police? Why is not one voice in the American political system speaking out for the police who are now being targeted by these criminals? I haven't heard the Republican Party say one word. I haven't heard John Boehner call for a special prayer in Congress. I guess they're on vacation. I don't know where they are. Not one word from the White House. Now, how long do you think this will go on until finally there is a civil war in the United States of America? A year ago, I published a book called Stop the Coming Civil War. But Obama started the civil war. He started it with rhetoric. All wars start with rhetoric. Obama declared war on white police. Obama declared war on the middle class. Obama started this war. And somebody has to stop this maniac before it turns into a full-blown, insane shootout in the United States of America. Obama, Holder, Sharpton, de Blasio, and others, they're the ones who gave it a wink-wink, nod-nod, go out and kill police. They did it with their mouths. You tell me that they're not responsible for the epidemic of cop killings in the United States of America. Nobody will hold Obama responsible for what he did. Nobody. Now, there's a Texas sheriff who happens to be African-American who said the White House and Department of Justice, that would be Eric Holder, started open season on the American police. Listen to clip number three on the Savage Nation. Listen. I am too pissed off tonight to be diplomatic about what's going on, and I'm not going to stick my head in the sand about it. I said last December the war had been declared on the American police officer led by some high-profile people, one of them coming out of the White House, one coming out of the uh, uh, United States Department of Justice. And uh, it's open season right now. There's no doubt about it. And that's right. It's open season started by Obama. Now you understand the long march that has led to the execution of police, white police, specifically by black men, an epidemic now in the United States of America. There is an outright war on white police. See, Obama is the slick architect of all of it. He never says it. But he uses the thug, Al Sharpton, to go out. And look, Sharpton was in and out of the White House a hundred times. So he goes in and he tells him what to go out and say. And then he makes believe that he has clean hands. He has no clean hands. 
So a deputy was shot in the back of the head as he was pumping gas by a black, low-life, cowardly thug. Empties his gun, 15 shots, not one word from the White House. Now let's go back a week. France, three brave American off-duty um, military guys, one black, by the way, subdue an Islamist, beat him up, stop him from executing people on a train. Even the socialist president of France, Hollande, gave these men France's highest honor, the Legion to Honor. While your president, your lousy president, your divisive, revolutionary, Marxist president has not yet said one word about those men, those brave men. He has not said one word of sympathy to the family. He has not called for the end of the killing of police by black radicals. He is behind it as sure as I'm standing here. Now, you have to understand how this all works. I laid awake in bed last night and I said, this is all part of his master plan. And remember, I wrote, stop the coming civil war. He has neutralized the military by decapitating the active leadership of the military. He has only yes girls running the military. And that includes the men who are left. He has fired any general who would have stood up to him. He has gotten rid of any admiral who could have blown the whistle on Benghazi. He has decapitated the military the same way Stalin did, the same way every other dictator did, except in dictatorships, they just shot them. Here they smear them and fire them. But make no mistake about it, this very dangerous revolutionary Marxist in the White House has deballed our military, and that is why they're not fighting the war against ISIS. That's number one. So he lets ISIS rage across the Middle East, and in America he releases the mobs on the white police in order to corral them and keep them because they are the only ones who could possibly stand up to what he has coming and what he has in mind. If you think, if you actually think that this dangerous revolutionary Marxist in the White House is simply going to go quietly into the night uh, in 2016, you are crazy. You are mistaken. He has much more damage ahead for this country. I warn you, he has deballed the police, he has deballed the military, and he's doing it all so that we, the people, are backed into a corner. That's one man's opinion. This is a federal plot to take over the police force, to federalize all local police forces, because they are largely white policemen. This is all about racism from Barack Obama, who is clearly the most racist president you could ever imagine, occupying the highest office in the land. And if you think I'm the only one saying it, well, I really don't care if I'm the only one saying it. But I won't be the only one saying it tomorrow. Because millions of you understand that what I just said to you is 100% true. Very serious stuff, not easy to do, very depressing. But if no one in the media is willing to stand up for the police, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to stop until somebody says that the killing of the police must stop. It was started by Obama. Holder, Sharpton, Farrakhan, de Blasio, in my opinion, one man's opinion. This did not happen in a vacuum. War was declared on the American police officer by these people, in my estimation. It went on and on and on, and now they're killing them. Not one word in the media. I didn't see one story. Not one story. And when I turn on radio, I want to throw up. Why, them Republicans, why, if they want to win in 2016... Why, I tell you, it's them Dems, and now I have something to tell you about something else, but it's them Republicans. Oh, yeah, no, them Democrats are no good. No, I tell you, them Republicans are real good. We have a special guest on, a regular Republican. We're never going to have those evil Democrats on. Oh, yes. That's what you want to hear on radio? This medium must be used to stop the epidemic of violence against the police and to arrest Black Lives Matter because they are not protesting. They are killing. Their words are killing. I believe in the First Amendment. I live by it. But when you call for killing police and police get killed, that's not yelling fire in a crowded theater. That's yelling kill police in a crowded nation. That's filth. That's slime. Listen to Sheriff Clark in clip number five and see if he disagrees with me. Five. The President of the United States started this war on police. Look, you can't say anything you want in the United States of America. You cannot threaten people's lives. You can't call for the killing of, of people like we're seeing from some of these things. That is not First Amendment protection. That is protected. That is filth. That is slime. 
And you know, there are some law, enforce, uh, uh, law enforcement implications that can be done with the Department of Justice and with state's attorney's offices across the United States. I love the First Amendment. I love freedom of speech. You are not free to threaten my life or anybody else's. That is 100% right. And we the people must stand up for the thin blue line. You better stand up for the thin blue line or the street thugs are coming for you. And so we see what's going on. Graduating to treason. Graduating to treason. And that was the opening question to my book, Stop the Coming Civil War. And I asked you a question. By asking a question, in a statement rather, I said, people can justify a government's controversial policies and actions for only so long until they see a pattern of abuse of power. Then even the most devout supporters of any regime must decide if they support these extreme policies and actions or oppose them. With the current government under Barack Obama, this point of no return was reached for some when, uh, the, when they slowly realized the extent of the vast National Security Agency spying scandal. For others, it was the release of known Islamist terrorists from the Gitmo prison without congressional knowledge. For most Americans, the flood of tens of thousands of illegal immigrants from Central America purposely created by the administration to overwhelm our southern borders was the final straw. Still other supporters kept justifying one extremist act after another, justifying the president's policies and actions with rationalizations that included saying that those who opposed them were, quote, right-wing conspirators, racists, Obama haters, and the like. Yet for those of us who study governments that have taken nations from freedom to fascism, the handwriting has been on the wall for many years. My question is this, will the Obama inner circle of extremist left-wing radicals trigger an event that will provoke an American insurrection, even a civil war? That's the opening to stop the coming civil war. I rest my case. I'll be back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. We've been talking about Obama's war on police and how police are being killed across America, namely white police by black thugs. That's right. It's an epidemic. It's going on. And someone has to say something. And we have to say that all lives matter. Not just black lives matter. No, all lives do matter. And we've also got to stand up against the thugs in the Black Lives Matter crowd and understand that many of them are hateful, murderous thugs. And there's a difference between free speech and calling for the murder of police. When they chant pigs in a blanket, frying like bacon. When the Black Panthers are threatening Texas cops, we will start creeping up on you in the darkness. And the president does nothing. Then you know that it's he and Sharpton who have conspired to see this day arise in the United States of America. And again, I try to warn you what was coming a year ago with Stop the Coming Civil War. I warned you, and if you think that Obama's going to go away quietly in the night, you are a dreamer. You're a real dreamer if you think that this revolutionary communist is going to just simply hand the reins over to Donald Trump. You must be kidding. There's an awful lot of time left for this man to do mischief. And mischief is what he is all about. He will not rest until America is broken, until every avenue of protest is snuffed out. This man is behind it all as sure as I'm sitting here. You say, well, how can you prove that? Well, you put two and two together. Al Sharpton is Barack Obama in a jumpsuit. Al Sharpton is Barack Obama without the smoothness. That's why he took that street thug in and out of the White House secretly a hundred times over the last few years to tell him exactly what to say that he himself could not say. This is how it works. He was sent out to make sure there was a war on police, in my opinion. Then there's Holder, now enjoying a multi-million dollar lifestyle as a lawyer. After wrecking America's peace and harmony, he went back to a law firm. Then there's de Blasio, still ruining New York. Then there's Louis Farrakhan, who asked openly a week ago for men to go out and kill police. He said it. Not one word from the White House at the time. My friends, you're in the middle of a civil war. It was started when this communist street agitator was sworn in, and it's only just begun. 
Not since the run-up to the Civil War have we as a country been more divided. 